October 29th. I'm in the office of Nicole Termel, the leader of the NDP. Uh, you're not, people know your name and they don't know a lot about you. I've been reading a little bit about you and you've got quite an interesting history. Can you tell me about your political evolution and how you got from being a public servant to being the leader of the official opposition? Yes, I will say uh, people don't know me, my background in politics, but I've been involved with the NDP for 20 years. Uh, socially, I'm really uh, a social person, New Democrat, it is clear, getting involved with the social housing. And uh, I ran in 2009 for municipal election. I lost by 95 votes, but that again, I was retired start with, but it gave me, uh, I'll say the experience, but as well, I realized that I was ready to do something for people in my writing and for the organization. And as a, an NDP person, that was my choice. I just wanted to run for the NDP. I, I, tell me about the, the strike in 1980, because that seems, seems very interesting. <laughs> The strike in 1980 with PSAC, that's why really I started to be involved as a, as a person. Um, I, uh, I was a clerk, and uh, we believe at the time that uh, the rights in our collective agreement did not take care of, the, of women, really. We were uh, probably 80 percent of the of the person rep uh, woman represented in that collective agreement. So we felt that our union um, didn't uh, represent us well on the uh, protection, especially for pregnant women, maternity leave, paternity leave, and uh, we decided to go on strike against the will of the of the union. We were. Uh, uh, in, so we just did it. We went on strike for 13 days, if I remember, and after that, I just got involved in the labor movement uh, until 1990. In 1990, I uh, I was elected at the national level of my union, and from there. I just fought for women, but for the labor in general, men and women in general. And uh, in 2000, I got elected as president, as the first woman, I would say, president of Public Service Alliance of Canada. You, uh, through your work and the work of, the, uh, of others, you really changed the culture of, of your union, didn't you? Yes, we did. Uh, I would say, and I have to recognize that Daryl Bean, who was the president, the former president, uh, moved the PSAC from an association to really a union. After that, I took over. I, even as vice president in 1991, uh, we were three women on the executive of the five, and we changed really the the, the approach, but the way to work, we we got an uh, organization that was different. We had women's conference, we had human rights conference, and we were more inclusive in our approach to uh, negotiation, but it was more than, than uh, negotiation. For me, PSAC or union in general, I should say, it's a social approach that we should explain to people, that with we should get them involved because what we win for the labor, for the workers, it has an impact on people in general in Canada, and that's what I believe in. So I didn't want to have a closed union. I, want to have, I wanted to have a union where people felt comfortable, but at the same time that what we were getting or what we were fighting for had an impact and a result for them too. I see. Now, how you you were national president t until what year? 2006. 2006, and then you retired. And yeah, I retired. I retired in 2006, and then I was involved in in social community, social work in my community, and then I decided to run when Jack Layton approached me. Uh, in last January, it seems to me like it's years ago, but the, he, when he approached me uh, in January to run for the NDP. Hmm. Now, how, I don't know quite how to put 
put it, how, how will you carry on what you did in the labor movement into politics? I, I'm saying how will you, how, how are you carrying on? I would say it's the same principle in general. Uh, you want to, uh, to work for people. You want to represent them. You believe in the cause that you represent. So the NDP for me was natural. It was for everybody, and at the same time, my experience in the labor movement helped me to represent or to defend the rights of Canadians altogether. So uh, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, be, be, uh, being with the PSEC, that is a government uh, workers mostly, I would say 60-70% probably now because it's that sh it has changed a lot, 70% of the workers work for the federal government and so I had to work with the parties in place, being the liberal, the conservative and we never liked their, their action or their decision affecting Canadians, affecting the labor movement, affecting in general the working condition of people. So uh, we were always working with the NDP and at the time with the bloc to make sure we push forward our agenda. That was the agenda of the NDP. So really that was uh, my link to the, to the political uh, side of it. I was also involved with the Canadian Labour Congress and I was a representative on the International uh, uh, Union Labour with the uh, International Public Service. So I, I had a, an idea of view of the international condition like working with South America, Central America and uh, so everywhere it's the same problem. When you see coming the right wing agenda wherever you just see it coming from Australia, New Zealand and places like that. So we could see the agenda of this conservative government coming in and I thought that it was time for me to get involved and do a little bit more. I'm going to switch a little bit. I'm, I'm very interested in what is happening politically in the province of Quebec where you come from. I understand you grew up a uh, unilingual francophone. Uh, you moved to Gatineau, I believe, and uh, over, over time became involved in um, national and federal issues. But now, so, so I think you would probably be very well situated to be able to tell me, what, what's the feeling on the ground in Quebec, and how, how does the NPD, which has no roots there, grow? Yeah, the NDP didn't have roots. We have 59 NPs now, this is great. Uh, but Quebec wanted to get involved in Canada, and I believe that the uh, the way it was going, they just saw the negative side and not the positive side, bringing solution, and so they decided to vote for us and seeing us as a social democrat. So that's the message I got back uh, from Quebec, and I'm really proud that uh, they chose that avenue. They wanted to change, and they chose us. What kind of work do you and your Quebec caucus colleagues have in mind in order to put down some roots and ex extend some networks and build build some solid support that goes beyond the ballot box on May 2nd? Uh, we'll do our best to create association in uh, Quebec like we do in other provinces in Canada. Quebec doesn't have a provincial party. Uh, I don't believe that it will happen in the next uh, few, two or three years for sure. We need to build at what we have. And uh, uh, when we discuss the MPs from Quebec and the caucus, what we want to be to do is really being in the field, working with the social groupment, with the labor, with the community in general, being known for what we, what we are, and presenting our agenda that is to create a better world. That's what we are about. And Quebec people, they believe in that too. So uh, I, there, it's a lot of work. I do agree, in Quebec and outside of Quebec. But what I said at one point is, the issue in Quebec are not different. Politically, it might be might look like it's a bit different, but in issues, it's not different. Pension is a big problem, wherever you are in Canada. 
uh, having a, a job is the same problem in Quebec as anywhere in Canada. So you need to present your, our agenda, our program. We need to explain to them. And at this point, the, the survey the is going, Paul are telling that it's really good, it's working. So we'll work on this. Tell me about your caucus, who, uh, about your Quebec caucus, because they're largely unknown to, uh, to the Canadian public. I've been very impressed watching uh, your new caucus in question period. Tell me about where, where your Quebec caucus with the backgrounds, uh, the strengths, who we, some of the people who stand out uh, as people to watch uh, over the next few years. Can you make some comments? Yes. Uh, you have 59 MPs. Uh, you have a diversity. Uh, you have a woman, even she's not from Quebec, she's from outside, she's a refugee. You have a doctor, you have a notary, you have different students that were in school studying social program, others studying political program, and experience, really their experience is mostly with the students with when they were in school and k getting involved and still involved after they left their university. They are, there's a lot of experience there in their own way. That is different than our experience. So those who ran at the time, they believed they were NDP, but mainly not involved in politics, mainly in other kind of politics, put it this way. So they were involved in their community and uh, they just decided to run. And it's great for us. And uh, right now they go back, they, it's working well. Now there's a leadership contest that's going to happen. We have two declared candidates and I expect there will be more. How will Quebecers how will you get Quebecers involved? We, it, it's well known that there are very few uh, me NDP members in Quebec at this point. How, how, do you, how do you build it up? Yeah, I understand it is a challenge. Uh, Quebec, uh, and we, we are working on it, but uh, what happened is that's why we delayed the, the, the leadership uh, con convention that will be at the end of March to help Quebec to organize and to help Quebec uh, to sell cards, to get cards, new members. I think that's a great tool to organize. It will be great. And they will get involved. They, they want, like everybody else, they want a leader that represents the value of the NDP, and I'm sure it will happen. In most leadership camp, in many leadership campaigns I've been involved in, uh, you, you get people who are working for the leadership candidates signing up members. But you can't, but the party can't rely just on that, can it? There is, is there going to be some kind of a organizational push to, to sign up members to get involved in the, in the leadership uh, contest? The it, yeah, the party cannot get involved to, to do that. It has to be in the province, it has to be through the association, and the candidates can do that. And anybody can get involved after the hours of work. They can work on, on it. And I believe it will happen as well. Like I said, it is a challenge, but it will happen, I am sure. At one point, Quebec voted 59 MPs in. I am sure at one point they will want to choose as well. They will want, without having all the vote, they will want to present their opinion, their view, who should be the next leader. I am sure of that. Are people requesting memberships? Yes, yes, they are phoning uh, uh, places. They want to know where to get a membership card or through the, uh, the uh, uh, email address or to the NDP. So they want to know where to get a card and it will happen. I know that will have an increase. What do you Switching to, well, let's talk about the leadership race a little bit. Yes. At, th at this point, there are two declared candidates. How many do you think there will ultimately be? Do you have a sense? Uh, not exactly. We know five or six of them have expressed uh, an interest in running. Uh, at the end, uh, they have still until after Christmas to decide or to make uh, their decision, but probably four or five, but I cannot say 100% sure. It's the person doesn't tell me. They just tell me when, like everybody else, when they decide to, to go for it. So, without asking you to endorse any sort of person, what 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 do you think the next leader ne will need to bring to the job? 
uh, I will say that uh, uh, what they bring to the job for sure leadership and the, po the possible candidates in my view have all a leadership so uh, they bring to uh, the party they will bring to the party the value that Jack Layton believe in that we have been elected for and it is really important for me uh, they will they might and they will have a different way to approach problems solution their vision and that's great for the party we'll have a good debate they will have, I think we'll have four or five debates, I'm trying to remember at this point, over Canada for the candidates, so the Canadian will be able to go to this debate and decide. So that's what they will bring. I think it's really great for the party. Now, uh, I'd just like to close by asking a little bit about Jack Layton and his influence. I, I knew Jack a bit, and we, we had a friendly relationship. And uh, Obviously, he brought you and many, many, many people into the party. How is his? How does? How do you feel his presence on a on a day to day basis? How how does Jack's presence uh, affect the NDP on an everyday operating basis? How do we miss you yes, <laughs> I have to say personally, but I think it's the same for everybody. We missed him a lot. We miss him. He was wise. He was smart. He was uh, close to people. He was he, he brought in his art and his conviction, and that was him. So uh, even for myself, as an example, didn't want to run, and just meeting him and uh, feeling what he was about and, and how convinced he was about the possibility that we could be uh, in Parliament, I, you just say, okay, at one point, I have to do it. And that's what he brought to us. Uh, the, the hope, like he said, hope, love, and hope and at the same time working hard and everything, and optimism. And uh, like we say now, we are governed